comes to mind that I've always liked and wanted to, to work with or keep would like, just drop my phone in the water. Hit record on that guy. All right guys, welcome back. Today I am doing the January 2023 Q&A. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these guys and this will be the first Q&A for the year of 2023. So let's just jump right in, see what we got. The first question from Loki underscore and underscore Brewster. Target species for 2023 I haven't seen in the wild yet. Oh man, um, I don't think I've seen maybe a couple of like the map turtles I haven't seen. Um, and uh, maybe a big one would be bog turtles. So maybe I can link up with somebody from Georgia DNR and be a part of a bog turtle survey. That might be kind of cool. Um, or go up north and see something totally different I've never seen before and see like some wild wood turtles. That would be really awesome. Um, so that would be that would be something to, to maybe make a goal this year. Maybe try and go up north, see some wood turtles or go up north and see some bog turtles. All right, hard shell herps. Any unique plans for 2023? Uh, so I do have a few things in the works. Um, I do have more trapping for 2023. Um, so uh, a lot of the things I do is dependent upon work, uh, doing wedding, uh, photo and video, um, other miscellaneous photo and video. So fitting in things beyond that, you know, I have a few other things with alligator snapping turtles, like some pretty cool events that, that I'm hoping to be a part of uh, in the early spring. Um, I might go be a part of another aquascape build. Uh, I'll kind of announce those things as they come up. And for the most part, maybe just trying to build the channel out more, uh, create more content and maybe more variety of content. Um, I know it is Greg's Turtle Haven and this, this is my house, this is my haven. Um, but I do want to kind of show what other people are doing. I do want to show things uh, beyond turtles and tortoises. Um, and I do want to show uh, a lot of more real conservation. You know, things in captivity and pets is cool and all, but that's not real conservation. Conservation is preserving land and preserving animals in the wild where they belong. So I really like being involved with that stuff and I really want to kind of maybe share more of that and how people are doing that um, and organizations are doing that. So. Um, I don't know. I, I can fill up my plate <laughs> pretty easy in my head, but we'll see how it shakes out. All right, swamp life reptiles. What's one species of turtle you've always liked but haven't kept yet? Um, for turtle, so if we're gonna talk like aquatic turtle or something in between aquatic and land that I've always liked and haven't done anything with, I, I don't know. I, I think the only thing that really comes to mind that I've always liked and wanted to, to work with or keep would be like radiated tortoises. I just think they're neat because they're like a smaller version of like a giant tortoise like an Aldabra or a Galop because they've got those thick chunky legs and they walk high off the ground um, and they have that beautiful shell. Um, and one of the things I like about radiated tortoises is, you know, the only way to get one is bred in captivity. So that's awesome, at least here in the States. Um, so I really like that. I like that, you know, they're being bred in captivity. There used to be a guy here in Georgia that was breeding them and did a really good job with them. And I think he kind of retired from that. So I don't think I'll be able to get one, but I do get to go and visit friends in Florida and they have them. So it's always cool to kind of get to see them and check them out. And they just have such a beautiful sculpted shell. And, um, you know, I did a video with my friend Chase Pirtle down in Florida and he has a bunch of them and they have amazing personalities and they're super friendly and just awesome animals. So yeah, probably radiated tortoise would, would kind of top my list. And I know that for some people that's probably not even that exciting. I know people want to hear me say like, just drop my phone in the water. Oh, I just dropped my phone in the pond. Here's content. Oh. Uh. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is not how I saw this video going. Hey Greg, maybe you don't do your videos next to the pond. I can't believe I dropped my phone in there. That was so dumb. All right, Kevin underscore Spencer underscore 93. Best food for Macrochiles under one year of age in human care. Uh, best thing to give them is just live fish. Give them what they eat in the wild. You know, these guys like to, you know, as youngsters, they get in shallow water. They go find a place that's like a little warm, sunny spot where there's gonna be congregations of mosquito fish and little live bearing fish, also tiny little uh, invertebrates. And so I would just give them that. Uh, don't, don't even bother with, you know, pelleted foods or any of that stuff. Just give them live fish. That's what they, that's what they want and that's what they need. So especially first couple years, that's all they need. Uh, 
crocodile.egg. Georgia has hellbenders. Ever found any? Hellbender country video would be cool. Yeah, hellbenders are awesome. I'm a huge fan of salamanders. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen me put out some salamander videos on the channel. I'll be putting out more. Um, I have found a hellbender by accident one time. I was up in North Georgia and I saw this stream and it just looked really cool. And I saw a whole bunch of flat rocks and I'm used to looking for like striped neck musk turtles. And I remember I flipped this big flat rock over and I was like, oh, this should have a striped neck musk under it, flipped it over. And then this brown thing came out and at first I thought it was a catfish and it went downstream and I realized like, oh, that was a hellbender. And I, you know, just kind of forced got my way upon the hellbender stream. So uh, it would be really cool to link up again. You know, it'd be cool to link up with Georgia DNR. I know there's a couple guys in the DNR that do hellbender surveys. Um, so it'd be cool to kind of go up and get some underwater video and show, you know, well, where hellbenders live, um, what makes the habitat unique, what um, kind of puts them at risk. Um, you know, even even things as simple and seemingly innocent as people going to a creek and rock stacking, that's taking away habitat from hellbenders and, you know, their prey and other smaller salamanders. So um, rock stacking bad, hellbenders good. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to go see some sometime. Thanks for that idea. I, I really like that. Real underscore Cade. What's up, brother? Um, when am I coming to Texas? Um, potentially this year. Um, I do have family in Texas. Um, and my dad and I had talked about maybe taking his camper trailer and making a trip over to Texas. And if, if I go to Texas, man, Texas is like turtle central and it's such a large state, so much varied habitat and so many varied species. I mean, there's, I mean, all kinds of reptiles and amphibians in Texas. So I definitely plan on getting over there. I would hope that it would happen this year, but we'll just kind of see how my schedule shakes out and everything else kind of going on in my life. So uh, we'll see, but I, I definitely want to be in Texas. Uh, Novo Toco, best turtle for Colorado besides a painted. I don't know, man, the, the painted turtle's the only turtle I can think of that would be great in Colorado. Um, I think there's some, I think there's some soft shell species, like a, some kind of spiny soft shell that lives out there, but I'm not 100% sure, so I can't really give you any advice better than a, a painted turtle, maybe a northern red belly, but I don't know what part of Colorado you live in, um, and so I don't know, like, your weather patterns and your winter painted turtle. <laughs> Oh God, this is, a, this is a heavy one. Where do I see myself in 2033? So when I'm like 52, <laughs> will I someday move to more land? Um, yeah, I would like to think that by, by 2033, I might be living somewhere else, potentially with more land. And if I don't live on more land, I'd like to hopefully be able to, if like say the YouTube channel, I'm, I'm still doing it by then say it grows and I'm making you know I've managed to turn this into something that that makes enough money um, I don't need the money for me I would like to put the money towards you know buying some land and preserving some habitat so and I've had this conversation with friends before where you know I think my first choice would be to buy some land along um, one of the Sewanee River drainages to just create a protection barrier for the Sewanee alligator snapping turtles that I study. Um, and, you know, just by protecting that area of land, that would also protect things like gopher tortoises and indigo snakes, eastern diamondback rattlesnakes, um, all the things that kind of occur in that area. Um, I think the future of conservation is going to be preserving land and preserving habitat from development because development in the next 10 years is just going to get crazier. So I think. Um, the best thing anybody can do for conservation right now is is either buy land or contribute to somebody that's going to buy land and preserve habitat. All right, guys, so those were some good questions. Thank you guys so much for those, and uh, I was glad to answer them. Hopefully, I will be getting you guys some more videos and getting you some more content. I'm going to be trying to take some trips um, and maybe visit some other keepers and show how they do things. So thank you guys again, and I will see you guys next time. I'm going to keep my phone away from the stream. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. Take care. Peace.